The World Health Organization is walking back comments about the asymptomatic spread of coronavirus after this remark by a top epidemiologist. It still appears to be rare that an asymptomatic individual actually transmits onward. What we really want to be focused on are, is following the symptomatic cases. If we followed all of the symptomatic cases, because we know that this is a respiratory pathogen, it passes from an individual through infectious droplets. If we actually followed all of the but now the UN Health Agency is clarifying, saying the jury is still out on how frequently the virus is spread by people not showing symptoms of COVID-19. The debate comes as a Harvard study weighs whether COVID-19 was spreading through China as far back as last August. Earlier, I spoke to Dr. Ashish Jha. He is the director of Harvard's Global Health Institute. You know, I think most people are afraid of this idea of asymptomatic spread because if you can't see it, you have no idea whether you are exposed to it, it seems a little bit more frightening than if you can identify someone with symptoms. So, Dr. Jaw, what is the bottom line? Can asymptomatic people spread COVID-19? Yes, absolutely. There really isn't much debate about that. All the evidence so far uh, says asymptomatic people can spread the disease and they do spread the disease. And where there is a debate is, are they a major spreader? Are they just, you know, kind of a, uh, a minor spreader? But I think pretty convincing evidence that people without symptoms definitely can spread the disease. And so you said the debate so still the debate exists as to as how frequently and how efficiently they are, they are spreading they are the spreading disease. disease. Where does the science currently lean on that question? Yeah, so the best science suggests that as much as half of all infections are coming from asymptomatic people, people who don't have symptoms at the time they spread. Many of those people will go on to develop symptoms later. That's why sometimes we call them pre-symptomatic. But when you are standing next to somebody at a coffee shop, they look fine, they feel fine, they could be infected and they could be spreading the virus. Uh, this is why we all have to be wearing masks and this is why we all have to maintain social distancing. That's a pretty high percentage that you just quoted there. And, and I, I think it, it's scary because you go out, as you said, and you say, I feel fine. That person looks fine. The weather's warming up. You know, coronavirus is apparently on the decline in my area. Um, I know that there are some areas where it's not on the decline, but, you know, hypothetically here, here in the New York area, it is on the decline. So it's very easy to slip into this false sense of security, correct? Yeah, and I think that's a bit of what has happened in a lot of states, and that's why we're seeing in uh, 19 states the number of cases really starting to rise. In a few states, uh, quite quickly and quite aggressively increases in, in cases. So uh, this is not a moment to let down our guard. We're still early in this pandemic, and even with warmer weather, I'm worried that we're going to see more cases as people spend more time outdoors, and, and especially when they're not wearing masks and, and taking it uh, carefully. That is very worrisome. So, doctor, if one does have the virus, at what stage are, are they the most contagious? So that's something we're still sorting out. We know about 20 percent of people, one out of five people who get infected, uh, look like they never develop any symptoms at all. And, and that, that's the group that we don't know how infectious they are. Um, for the other 80 percent, there's pretty good evidence that they're very infectious in the couple of days before they develop symptoms. So maybe day four, day five of being infected, they haven't developed symptoms yet, and yet they're shedding a lot of virus. Uh, and then they go on to develop symptoms after that. So, you know, that's when we think people are most infectious, but we're not totally sure. We're still sorting out some of the finer details. And what about when people have recovered? Because we all know at this point, people who've had the virus and who've recovered, how long after recovery are they still infectious, if at all? Yeah. So again, this is one where science is changing pretty fast. We think uh, that after about a week of symptoms, uh, most people are not infectious anymore or have very low levels of virus. There's always a theoretical risk. But my feeling is once your symptoms have gone away and you're feeling better, uh, it's always good to get another test if you can to see if you've tested negative. Uh, but at that point, your risk of spreading it to other people really has gotten pretty low.
All right, that is, that's good to know. Uh, now, Dr. China is dismissing a new Harvard Medical School study suggesting the coronavirus was spreading in Wuhan much earlier than originally thought, even as early as August. So what evidence uh, was used for scientists to make that case? Yeah, so what the scientists here did was they looked at things like, you know, parking lots and seeing that parking lots were busier in, in August and September of 2019 compared to historical controls. Uh, they looked at other evidence of foot traffic into the hospital. And they also looked at people searching for symptoms in the kind of Chinese version of Google. And all of that, I think, is circumstantial evidence. I don't think this proves that the virus was spreading uh, and circulating in Wuhan. But I would not be surprised if, if it turns out that, in fact, in, a, in certainly in October, uh, the virus was already circulating in Wuhan. Uh, I doubt that this all began in December in that in that uh, wet market. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a couple of months earlier. August seems a little early to me, but this is the first data I've seen that it could be that early. Somewhere around October probably is when the virus really started spreading. And also, Doctor, I want to ask you, because recently in the New York Times, you said the CDC is no longer the reliable go-to place uh, for health information. Where should Americans go then for their health information in this crucial time? Yeah, you know, that was a, that was a very uh, unfortunate article because basically what it detailed was here's the CDC, the world's greatest public health agency, and how they have been completely sidelined by the administration in this pandemic. So they're still putting out some good information. I still look at the CDC as a reliable source, but I double check it against other sources, uh, including WHO and others, because uh, the great scientists or CDC of the CDC are just not being given the chance to speak directly to the American people without political filters and without political oversight. Well, Dr. Ashish Jha, we thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your insight. Thank you.